Welcome back to the shop friends. In the last two episodes we created the reference face and the reference edge on our series and how to dimension a piece of lumber with hand tools. Today we're going to create a parallel surface uh, to the reference face and the reference edge and the four sides of the board will be complete. On the first episode in the series I mentioned using a marking gauge and today is when we're going to use that. I actually misspoke and said that this was a Veritas marking gauge and it's actually a Wood River. This is a, a fairly new tool for me but it's been really handy and it's worked really well. So what I did was I, I set my marking gauge to the area of the board that is the most narrow and that is from the reference face to the opposite face. And it actually was this corner here. I don't have a specific dimension that I want this, the thickness of this board to be. I just want each of the boards to be um, consistent, the three uprights for the treadle lathe. So I set my marking gauge to, this, to the most narrow uh, width, and now I'm going to uh, take a few minutes and, and actually go around the entire board uh, using the reference face as my guide to mark the thickness so it'll be consistent around the entire board. I like this marking gauge because it has a, a wide fence here on the edge and it seems to slide across the wood really smoothly. The other two that I showed uh, seem to drag a little bit and they seem to be a little bit more difficult to, um, to keep from, from uh, sort of wavering side to side. Let me bring you up a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just sliding the marking gauge along the reference face and the reference edge there and I'm engraving a mark on the opposite side. You can see the mark that I'm creating right here. I'm a little bit disappointed in the lamination that I created. This is the first time I've actually laminated boards using hand tools and I, I guess I didn't get the boards quite flat enough on the edges leaving a little bit of a gap. I don't think it's going to matter too much down here in the end where the gap is as this is where um, I'll cross cut it to cut it to length and also there will be a tenon down here as well. So I'm just going to continue to work my way around the board using the marking gauge. Okay, I marked the edge all the way down the length of the board. Now I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to run it down the, the mark that I made. That way it's a little bit easier to see it when I'm planing. You can see there well, how well the, the, uh, the mark that we made shows up with a pencil mark in it. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and mark the other three uh, sides. And then we'll come back and we'll get to planing. Okay, I've got all four sides marked using the reference face as the guide. I think you can see here all the way across and then down the length of the board we have a mark all the way down and that is a consistent thickness again uh, from the uh, reference face. Now that we have the uh, entire edge marked I'll uh, get the uh, board uh, clamped into the vise here and we'll get started planing. Okay, now I've got the uh, board uh, uh, secure in the vise on the workbench and I'll go ahead and take my jack plane, very similar to before, and begin to bring this down to meet that line that goes around the entire board. You can see there that I brought this edge of the board down to meet the line. I'm going to do that along the entire perimeter of the board. I'm going to get to the line around the whole thing and then I'll come back and I'll flatten out the uh, middle to meet all four sides. Thank <laughs> you. 
You can see now that I've planed the entire perimeter. You can see where I planed it here and along the perimeter. I've planed it down to the line that we've marked all the way around the board. You can tell I have not planed any of the middle so far. So we will continue on with the jack plane and we'll bring the middle down to the, uh, to the width of the edges. As I work my way down the board, I'll continue to check periodically to see how much lower I need to go in the middle to meet the edges. And I can see light on both sides of, on both edges of the board, so I need to come down a little bit more. And the same here as well. <laughs> While I catch my breath for a second, you might ask yourself, man, that's a lot of work to flatten the back edge of that board. And it is, it's a lot of work for sure, especially with a board this size. Now, depending on the project you're building, you may choose not to flatten the backside. For example, in a lot of historic furniture, if you look at the back wall of a cabinet, oftentimes the back wall is not actually flat. It's actually got a, a little bit of a camber to it because they only actually uh, flattened or dimensioned the edges of the board and they would flatten the front side that shows from inside the cabinet but the back side would actually be rough. So you may choose not to actually flatten the opposite side from your reference face. Um, for my project on the treadle lay this will actually be um, more for looks than anything. I really only need one surface that is perfectly flat so I'm really doing this side more for looks than anything else. getting pretty close to being flat because I'm taking shavings all the way across and I'm watching my my edges as long as I plane making sure I don't go too deep so now I'll just walk down and see how much light is coming through underneath the plane and it's really very little it's definitely not enough to affect any of my joinery or the look of the piece now that I'm happy with the uh, with the flatness from side to side, I'm gonna take my joiner's plane and just work the top a little bit and see if I'm taking shavings all the way down. I'm happy with the way that feels from end to end, so I'm going to take my smoothing plane and just make the surface nice and smooth.
Okay, I'm happy with how flat that the uh, that the side of the wood is that we've been working on. Now it's time to mark the uh, the surface that is parallel to the reference edge. Now my marking gauge is not long enough to reach all the way across the board, so I'm going to use my Swanson adjustable square, and I'll also use my pencil. And what we'll do is we will just what I've done is I've found the most narrow surface of the board and that's uh, where I've set my marking gauge and then I'll just work my way down that way it's square to the reference edge. I've got the, uh, op the parallel edge marked all the way around the board on all four sides and now I'm going to take my jack plane and go ahead and start working it down. Right now I'm working down this end quite a bit. You probably can't tell on camera, but this end is what I marked my thickness with or my width with. And there's only maybe a sixteenth of an inch here. But down here I had closer to a quarter of an inch, so I'm going to work that down first. And then I'll come back with a jack plane and I'll finish it off. You can probably tell that I'm getting fairly close to my line on the end here. So I'm going to get down to that line and then I'm going to move down to the other end and get down to the line and then I'll, uh, and then I'll join the edge and, and uh, flatten the entire length of the board. I've got the two ends down to the, uh, the proper width and now I'm just going to um, flatten the middle to meet on the ends and then I'll check myself with my reference. I'm getting really close to my line now all the way around so I'm going to switch over to my joiners plane and start taking off the high spots. Okay, I'm down to my, to my line that we've made pretty much all the way around, so now we can start to check ourselves. If our reference face and our reference edge is square and our mark is correct, we should be fairly flat across the top. And indeed we are. We are very flat from, from uh, one end to the next. Let's also check and see if we have a 90 degree angle from our reference side to our uh, opposite reference e or opposite edge. So we'll use our adjustable right angle and be sure you're using the uh, reference face as the, as the side that you're uh, checking against. And we are dead dead on 90 degrees all the way across. Well friends, that's all the time we have for today. We've got a perfectly square piece of wood and now all we have left to do is square off the ends and cut it to length. I appreciate you watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Be sure to give a thumbs up. I'll see you in the next video.